Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to talk to Louise Hay from The Afterlife. Louise Hay is known from her self-healing work and also as the founder and just really the driving force of Hay House Publishing. So you've probably heard me talk about Louise Hay before, and she's definitely a mentor energy in the afterlife. She works a lot with the heart space, which is part of what we're going to have a conversation about today. So we're going to welcome in Louise Hay's energy. Okay, so I'm just going to quiet for a second. Do this a little differently than what we would normally do this. I'm just going to kind of feel my heartbeat. Let's just do this for real here. Really feel. So I see like what looks like a yellow flower. It's not a sunflower because it doesn't have that dark kind of rich brown in the center. It's got white in the center. It's like a soul flower. She says it's a soul flower. It's like a gift. So receive that energy right in your heart space from Louise Hay as she steps in. You can heal your life as part of the work that she shares. You can find a lot of her talks on and her interviews on uh, YouTube if you search for that. And also there's a playlist here too. So take a breath. Yellow rays of sunshine energy into your heart space. We are going to talk about being an empath. We're going to talk about the power of sensitive people and we're going to talk about the good. So Louise, it's such a pleasure to chat with you again. She is a spiritual teacher from the afterlife as much as she was in this lifetime and probably more so now. So I encourage you, especially if you're working on your intuition or if you're finding during this time, you're just feeling a lot as an empath you are and by the way if you're watching this particular video you probably are an empath which means you feel and sense energy through your heart which means that's how you're intuitive just so you know so louise hay is the one of the experts on that energy so thank you for thank you for presenting and she then she shows me okay so how we're connecting i don't hear her yet but is the heart space with the energy of the visual image so the heart space is the clairsentience which is the way that you're psychic if you are very feeling and sensing which you probably like i said you probably are if you're here and the visual channel which is clear audience which is seeing images using your mind's eye your imagination and your recall of matching up experiences or things that you've noticed in the past that you have started to identify with certain things experiences even emotion or understandings that when you see that imagery again and it just comes into your mind that it gives you some information so that sun energy is really connected to your spirit or your intuition and just opening up, just raise the sun. You're just raising the sun energy. So we want to know, <laughs> I want to feel the good. I want to feel the goodness. Can you talk to us a bit about, well, I'm not even sure where you want to start. Let me just open this up to you and where you want to start. Where do you want to start from? What do we as human beings on the planet at this time want the most what do we want okay so i just keep seeing imagery here it's like a gift a box a box to open an old box like the heritage the history the lineage there are many trends there are many trends in self-development in personal development in psychic development and in spirituality that reflect the evolutions of human, of the race of humanity. And it is easy to see or perceive all these others, others that you see as separate from yourself, other people she's referring to, as having this incredible ability to be able to show up and be very active in supporting others and helping this, this helper vitality that comes with helping the the attraction to being a helper is something that has been so misunderstood she says it, it it creates a sense of belonging like you aren't the one who is needy or needing or in lack 
but you are the one, if you are a helper, you are the one that has more of their life together, who has the ability to give to others, who has this perception, there's this perception of those who are helpers that they don't need as much. And because of that, it's quite a detriment. You, 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 um, she says, you shoot yourself in the foot with that because you actually start to believe it. So at this time, there is an, a, a reckoning that is occurring with those who have always been the helpers. You, Bridget, would refer to these as the empaths, as you've spoken about recently quite a bit, quite a lot recently. And the energy of that heart space is, is definitely the place where you can allow yourself, give yourself attention to take a break, to revitalize, to recognize just the simple, the simple, okay, so she's like, the simple power of who you are, it resides in your heart space. It resides, no matter how you identify. If you identify as an empath, a highly sensitive person, a psychic, an intuitive, a healer, or simply one of those people that just everybody goes to. You give your all and everybody asks you to help, like you're the volunteer or you're the one that somebody comes to in, at work and just needs to talk so that they just come to you and you just listen and you're just there for everybody. Those, whatever that role is, however you identify, she's like the heart space is, is, there's a reckoning that's happening now. You have to reconcile the difference between who you've been, who you have been being in your service to everyone else. This humanitarian um, um, image and example that you see of many successful people as being very humanitarian. Well, they have the, the and she's an she, interesting choice of words, she says the luxury of being so because they have been through many iterations of their own life experience, many cycles of their own lives, through failures and successes and, and um, relationships and, and external experiences where they have been really forced into being, um, having to experience the bullying and the, the um, extremes of judgment versus adoration. And she says, and so it may appear that these people have are just, this is just the normal way of what's happening or of how you're supposed to be like, this is the example. And she says, it's not the example that that we want you to be creating right now. We want you to be creating from a pure place of heart centeredness. And that will get you much more success. That will get you to the capacity level to actually be able to support, sponsor, um, contribute to other organizations and people in ways that you can't even imagine right now because of the limited, the limited energy you have to expend. You're showing up without your gas tank full. You can't travel the full length, the duration of the journey to reach that destination or goal or intention. You can't, you simply cannot. <sighs> exhale, nice exhale, everyone. <sighs> this is true. This is very true. This is very true, very much in alignment with what, I, well, with what I've been feeling and hearing and <laughs> tapping into without um, my Sunday morning coffee episodes on Above Life Channel have been about this and energetically, and I've been talking about it on my Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel and on my Facebook page on Bridget Inspired. So this is really right in the same vein as, as what has been coming through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is it about this time where she says you've, you've reached your limits, you've reached the edge of your capacity to give because it is now the time to go back to, she says, go back to the well to get more water, go back to the well to get more abundance. You've got to really connect into this ever flowing fountain that of energy you're perceiving it as energy and she says but it's the source of you it is your core it is like lifeblood and it is light and it is this incredible understanding that we are all in a belonging together you have all come to this point and for some it's desperation now it's exhaustion it's it's overwhelmment, it's, it's the extremes of introversion, extroversion, it's the extremes of doing so much. It's, the, it's truly the, 
um, the the metaphor that you would use, Bridget. She says so the metaphor that she would use because she sees it in my mind and just picks it out is like a car with tires that are old. Could be a new car, beautiful, but the tires are old. They're not gonna get you very far. Eventually those tires need to be rotated. They need to be checked for the tire pressure. They need to be replaced if they need to be. You know, you have to do all these things for, for maintenance, just for basic care that it's beyond the simple, she says, it's not the massage, it's not the smelling a candle necessarily that's going to do it anymore. It's not the old ways that we have, have maybe perhaps previously been thought because you are too far down the road, she says. You don't even remember where the well is. You don't know where you put your bucket because you may have given it to another person and borrowed it out, borrowed your love and positivity, positive, um, Positivity. She uses the word positivity, love and positivity to, to amplify someone else's goodness and forgotten your own. You, you've got a resource from yourself. And this is not selfishness or um, self-focused behavior. It is ensuring the endurance of you and all that you belong to, which is everyone, to be able to be in it for the long run, not because the long haul is hard, but because there is this incredible journey or adventure that you are, you've already accepted the invitation to, to ride along and ride with. It's not a single solo road trip. It is a, a connection of belonging and it's easy to understand. It's easy to, it's easy to misunderstand, to miss the understanding, she says, to miss the understanding and this is why you see people needing to do things by themselves, on their own, solo um, adventures, solo walks, solo traveling, just being in nature, writing, being with yourself, being one with yourself. People are having to go back to the basics and reconnect with the body, mind, heart, and soul um, identities because they're diverse and it's not one solo understanding or role that is going to create success and happiness and joy and unleash the, the incredible source of, of all of this goodness within you. It is, not, it is not without the understanding that you are connected to the whole, but you are not here just because of the whole. You are here because of your individual contributions to the whole, but you have skipped through the process of the self-development, of the self-encouragement. Oh, a self-encouragement, I love that, I love that, I love that, self-encouragement. You really need to be your own best helper and we are learning at this time to be that. So you say we, does that mean the afterlife? So what role does the afterlife um, have for that? Especially on Above Life Channel, we talk to celebrities, um, musicians, artists, uh, historic figures, um, leaders, uh, how, how does the afterlife um, support or, or encourage or teach us? Oh, interesting. So she said, literally, I see a totem animal. I'm super, you guys know that I'm very clairvoyant. I always see stuff. That's how it works for me, my psychicness personally. I, instant connection. I see a panda bear. It's so sweet because she's gifting to me exactly in the way that I can receive. And she's showing me. <laughs> she's showing you by example. <laughs> yes, Louise Hay. There you go. Learn from example. Yes, yes. So black and white panda bear. So she is connecting to me the way that I can relate. Therefore, all of the spiritual helpers, guides, um, famous people, celebrities that you want to work with in the afterlife for you, not because, uh, not from a place of lack or misunderstanding, but from a place of resourcefulness, encouragement, so you can fuel yourself and inspire yourself, not because they're gonna tell you answers, because there's no answers. There is just connection, connection, connection. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I'm gonna tell you. So the black and white panda for me, thank you so much, Louise. Hey, oh, I just love you so much. She's like, oh, Bridget. Like literally holding my hand out, like just so 
I just love you so much. You are such a beautiful mentor to my sweet soul. She says, yes, and we should talk more often. I know, I know, but it's hard for me to feel like the empath within me for the last couple of years, it's been so intensive and, it, and it's tough. And now I'm here doing my self-encouragement, willing to work in this space that is, is a new territory for me as far as just being a leader from the heart space as my, as my resourceful well, like you showed. So thank you for that. And there'll be much more to come on these topics for you all if you're interested in, in expanding your own understandings. She's like, you're such a teacher, such a teacher. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So the panda. Oh, I'm getting really emotions coming up. And I love the emotions and the eyes. And I just feel oh, the breath of expansion and receiving the understanding. Just breathe it in and receive the understanding. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. That energy of breath. Yes, connecting to the air element, being in service by connection, you guys. It's about the connection. It's not about the answers you get. It's not about other people's expertise in the afterlife. They're not experts. They are just providing a perspective, a lensing, a way to connect for you, for you. Yes, just like me. So the panda is the black and white energies, which represents the contrast, or for some, the conflict, the fighting, or it's, it's like this separate, um, separate viewpoints, two different ways to look at something. The top of the mountain, you see one perspective or view versus the bottom of the mountain, you see one perspective or view, different. It's just based upon where we're at. The panda, so because it's an, a bear, the bear energy for me really represents divine feminine, mother, protector. So this is for me, a personal message for me as mother, divine feminine. Some of you know, if you watch my vlog on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube, you know that I'm at the edge of another transition with my kids. And now my second out of the four is gonna be graduating from high school and going off to the college realms and uh, there's a lot around that for me. And then we're also having at the same time school related, a my youngest who is, we're hoping to transition back into regular school setting that has been online school this last year, fully only online schooling and trying to get back into a kind of a social environment. And, and there's a lot of anxiety for me personally around these topics. And so it's kind of like what I'm feeling like for me is this two sides of the issue kind of thing where it's like I personally feel like there's there's a difference between what's best for them and what is least uncomfortable for me. So I want to save myself some of the anxiety, pain and worry, but that's not the best. My, my instincts for trying to help might be too much and kind of suffering and stifling and not let them have the opportunity. So being honest with my feelings and working on my tools that help me with anxiety and super duper worrying and stressing out over the craziest, silliest little what ifs and all the you know catastrophic scenarios because that's how it works for me when I'm anxious. Whew. Can I get a yeah, me too, me too, Bridget, me too, me too, me too, yes, yes, yes. I totally can relate to that. And versus um, projecting that onto them, so adding more weight to their worry, because if they think I'm worrying, they might be worrying about me worrying, which I know that that can happen. So if I can release my attachment to them needing um, the, the energy of me needing to, to know or have them do certain things or behave a certain way or feel a certain way so that I can feel better is not healthy or helpful. So there's a contrast there between what's best for them, what's best for me, or what I think is what's best for me based upon what I'm projecting, I think is what's best for them, which isn't, we don't know, we can't know, we can't control behaviors of others, we can influence, but we can't control. And if you're a parent, you totally get that, right? I can't even barely control or influence myself, body, mind, heart, and soul. I keep, I've referred to this a couple times. Thank you for bringing it up too. When I work with people in intuitive coaching and private sessions, I have a, just a simple model. It's a four part model, body, mind, heart, and soul. And then I can kind of look into 
through clairvoyance to see where things are kind of offset or where there's pressure or conflict or just co simple contrast and bring up different perspectives based upon what's showing up for the person, what topic they're bringing into session to focus on and where the kind of misalignment might be or where the misunderstandings, the missed, missed understandings are. So it helps us kind of just organize our stuff better. So that bear, protector, mother, divine feminine, and the, and it's not about decision making necessarily, it's just about seeing seeing that there are different perspectives and acknowledging that we don't have all the perspectives. I don't have the view if I'm standing at the bottom of the mountain and I'm standing at the top. I can't be in two places at once like that. I can't be at the top of the mountain and at the bottom of the mountain to watch the sunrise. I'm one place or the other and it's going to look a little bit different, isn't it? It's a different perspective, right? Okay, good stuff. Wow, that's really deep for me personally. I just would be quiet and receive if this was a private, like I was just channeling her for private myself, I would just receive right now. So let's do that, let's just receive. And I feel like the throat chakra is activated. Is your throat chakra activated? Did you just clear your throat or swallow? Oh, people on YouTube or YouTube universe, do not like it when you swallow if you have a microphone. So let's do that just to bug some people. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's the rebellious heart part of me. I'm working on the not caring so much what other people think. I didn't do that intentionally. I literally, literally did want some water. So my wants is part of self-care, which is part of being self-encouraging and self-helping, right? It's interesting too, I'm just thinking about this, how, thank you, brain, how the, um, the whole, whole topic or genre of self-help is really about other people's opinions of us. Isn't that kind of crazy, <laughs> actually? Self-help, here's my advice on, how, on myself. That's how it should be projected, right? Presented instead of, well, here's your top four ways of improving your you know, lack of motivation. Here's three ways to jumpstart your health. I mean, Let's just be clear, those kinds of books or tools or podcasts or YouTube channels are not, they're not bad at all. Well, I shouldn't say because I don't know all of them. That's a kind of a blanket statement, but um, they provide a structure in which you can look at something. So one perspective, right? One view or the, the one, two, threes or the five ways or the five steps is just simply a way to organize so that your brain can follow along, right? The pattern, the rhythm, yes, okay. So the bigger question is, is heart-based, heart. How can we shift from the mind's need to organize and the, and the ability for the mind to just kind of step away from what we're actually talking about in the conversation about empath and about enter, feeling the the um the place where we're at today and the afterlife support from afterlife guests and, and just insight like how can we focus the shift this conversation back into the heart and she's like you just did it you just dropped two from the heart through the throat into the chest or from the mind through the throat into the chest just allow it she's like you just in that moment, you shifted. She's like, in that moment, Bridget, you just shifted your attention and your focus. Because mm -hmm. it was really easy for me to feel drawn to the outside and then I go into a mindset of evaluating or even criticizing or judgment, which I've been working on the last year being in recognition of judgment, mostly because of my self-judgment and sabotaging you know, thoughts or or people pleasing and patterns that I use to help me to avoid the feeling, um, the feelings of you know disappointment or letting people down or that kind of a thing. But I jumped right in, my mind jumped right into, oh hey, let's evaluate or critique all these other people and the way they present. Ooh, that's not my intention at all. It's just one way, one filter, one perspective, and that's okay. That's why we subscribe to multiple YouTube channels. That's why we listen to different podcasts. That's why we listen to different radio stations and different music genres, you know? Mm -hmm. What else do you have that you would like to share, Luis, from an afterlife perspective? 
Yeah, there's really just this huge, okay, so the heart energy is also bringing in the water elements. We have the, the, the energy of the, okay, it's the, okay, so because Louise Hay does uh, like you can heal yourself stuff, or she did, that was part of her legacy here on earth as a person, she's showing us like chakras and some stuff we can do. So we're gonna get into the, some of the woo woo stuff. So yay, cool. As if we haven't been doing it already. But the throat chakra and the heart chakra are very much connected. And oftentimes when I see the throat, the air element connects in through the heart and can also be connected to the throat chakra. However, I feel like here, it's interesting because I feel like, so uh, the element of water is very commonly connected to emotion, like emotion flow. Um, and yet right now I see the throat chakra is pure water. Like right now with this conversation and connection, it's pure water. It really is. Let's have some water just because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's have some water because of that. And allowing just the moment to satisfy or nurture, to nurture the needs of the body through that throat channel and recognizing that that water soothes. And so the element of water itself, whether it's rain or the babbling brook or your fountain or a glass of water or a bath or a shower, you can soothe the energy within you based on the simple connection to water. And so she's saying, yes, it's intended here today for the movement and flow here at the throat to clear for the connection and communication that you've been talking about. So she and I have been, um, she's referencing some stuff that I've been thinking about, writing about in my journals and starting to record some podcasts for, for Sunday morning coffee. It makes me want more water. And so that, that, that element is very divine feminine. The water is abundant, prosperous. It means resourcing ourselves once again. And I said that energy of the resourcing ourselves, um, Louise shared about this like image. I said the image, didn't I? I think I did. It's hard when I'm in channeling to recall stuff. Um, did I say out loud that it was a well here? I think so, a well in the chest and like she's showing me buckets like to fill the well and like to take the, uh, the, the water from the well and then share it and stuff. And that the well is just always, it's like a spring underneath the earth, just constantly refilling and replenishing like a fountain that just keeps recycling the beautiful energies in positive, hopeful ways, more and more and more, there's always more. Goodness, 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 goodness. And so that energy of water also shows in the heart space. So the fact that the throat looks like water right now is gorgeous. I think that's really beautiful. And the color with it is like a turquoisey topaz color, turquoise topaz. And that is also a creative energy color that is also for creatives, for artists, for musicians, for writers. It is also the opportunity for manifesting for you. If you are feeling into that, it's muse-like energy, M-U-S-E, muse-like energy to help inspire you and to be lighter and allow that flow just to occur without the, with the freedom from the judgment, okay? I, I really have been in awareness of a lot of that energy, which is I think why I talked about people pleasing in one of my podcasts recently, because I'm really, I'm aware of this, some of these patternings and, and, and I want personally to expand my understanding so that I'm not holding on to any one belief, value or judgment about that for myself, because it's affecting my work for sure, and my my life, you know, I'm sure, just like with you, right? So that energy in the throat, it's interesting because it's kind of a little bit different than what maybe I would say is the cookie cutter kind of response for this. So the throat chakra and the heart chakra are working together, which they do often. And that energy in the heart space for us right now, you guys, besides that image of the water and the well and the bucket is the energy of the air and breathing into the lungs and whoo, exhaling out. And she says, you're like squeezing the grief out. She's like, when you're breathing and you're breathing with intention, she's like, you're softening the lungs and the lungs actually squeeze out the grief. They're like relaxing the grief. They're like, the muscles are contracting to expel the grief energy. She's like, that's what's happening in the lungs. The lungs are holding the grief. And so whenever you pause to take a breath, she said it gives an opportunity for this recognition inside of the need for the expulsion or the releasement 
like you don't have to judge it, you don't have to identify what it is, you don't have to know, but if you notice somebody, you just go, oh, they're sighing to release, to, to reject a, a pressured energy, a hurried energy, a, okay, now it's time for re-entry, get back into real life, whatever real life is, it wasn't real life before, the last virus stuff just so you know it wasn't the real life before then now we're actually trying to figure out what real life looks like aren't we yes we are which is why the heart is like ooh, super active and helping that lungs just release the grief all right nice like i want to give you a high five ooh, little high five chunk. <laughs> love it Okay, my friends here on Above Life Channel, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation with the spiritual teacher from the afterlife, Louise Hay, very much beautiful namaste energy to you, my friend, and to you as well who have listened. Thanks for being here. I hope you felt the energy movement and flow. Tap in and let me know in the comments below, what did you get out of this video? And um, please try to ignore some of the sassy comments because I'm sure there will be a few, which is fine, you guys. Let people express themselves. This is a safe place to do that. So don't feel like you have to defend or, you know, um, um, support my worthiness because on our core, we're just worthy. Okay, you and I, we're showing up here and we have kind hearts and we're worthy, right? So if you see our, uh, like a judgy, judgy McJudgerson comment, just to try to try to let it go because that person just needed to be heard even though it's a way that maybe we wouldn't like necessarily or approve of or something. That's okay because then in, by letting it be, just let it be, let it be. By letting it be, then we are not jumping into judgment ourselves, okay? Really, really, honestly, you guys, honestly. Because to cure like the energy of people pleasing, it's not all only positive comments or everybody that loves the Above Life channel can only be the ones that comment. No, I really want to work on this. The fact that people say stuff that's not so super positive is is because they need a place to be heard. That's it, they gotta, they gotta, expel their energy instead of breathing they're writing comments you know it's 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 just kind of the the way things are right now and by just uh, re recognizing that people are in different spots at the bottom of the mountain or at the top of the mountain that's just where they are don't let it affect where you're at unless you're you're um Oh, how should I say? If you're actually triggered or bothered by it, then just step back, disconnect, and be like, oh, so this is an opportunity for me to breathe and expel that energy that doesn't fit. It just releases and lets another fresh, beautiful, awesome connection energy come right in. And then you walk to the well and scoop up your bucket and ah, oh, take a drink of your water. Mm -hmm. And enjoy your energy, your vibes, and connect with the other comments that you like, all right? Okay. Mm. I hope you have a good day today. I hope I've helped to inspire your spirit with Louise Hay from the afterlife and filled, you, filled your bucket up with some hope today. Thanks so much for being here. <laughs>